Hello! So Monster Hunter games have been known to be played by a controller. This is because most of the genre up until the world was only made for consoles. Now I've been playing Monster Hunter since Freedom Unite, so naturally I also started with the controller layout. But when Monster Hunter World was finally released for Steam, I thought I should give it a try for mouse on keyboard and ever since I have not gone back to controller. This is my profile for Monster Hunter Bold, and this is my profile for Wild. So, as you can see, I pretty much play every single weapon. Or at least working on it. Chill the f*** out, the game's been out for a week. Now the default bindings for keyboard and mouse has definitely improved since the release of the world. Believe me, back then Capcom had you holding a f***ing keyboard button to aim a bow. But even as of now, where they've made so many improvements with the bindings, they are still garbage. So in this video, I'm gonna show you more than 10 hours of research on Monster Hunter keybinds and many years of experience using mouse and keyboard to play video games, shooters and everything alike. All you need is a mouse with two side buttons and a keyboard and i promise you even if you've used controller for monster hunter all of your life you use these bindings for at least 50 hunts and you will never ever go back to controller ever again so let's get us started okay first things first just so we become on par with each other i'm gonna quickly go over all the settings in the main menu and in game settings uh, also some of these settings are actually tied to the reason why we we're using certain keybinds and we're not using some others uh, so you can slow the video down and uh, match these with your in-game settings uh, and i'll explain the ones that are actually important uh, some of these are actually the graphic settings and uh, they're not really that important so i watched some videos myself and i I uh, used the settings that made the most sense to me uh, but I wanted this video to be a comprehensive settings video so you guys can just use my settings in terms of like video settings and everything uh, just as a baseline and then personalize them furthermore when you have the chance this video is mostly about the keybinds it's not about the uh, best graphics settings or anything like that but my settings are actually pretty cool and I, I like them so uh, you can use them as a baseline. So the first setting is going to be about your minimap. The way I've done this setting is so you have a very a small map during your combat, so you have more screen to see what the monster is doing, but you also have a very big map when you're exploring and gathering items. The reason I have these settings like this is because if you are in combat and we set it on a small, the map is going to be a small, but the second we go on to aim focus mode, if it's on default, it's going to increase the size of the map in focus mode, which is annoying. But then for holding item button, which uh, I actually set it to control and we'll get to that later i've set it to become larger this combined with uh, the uh, scaling which is um, set to a smaller is going to allow us to see a very large map and it's uh, scaled out so when you're gathering and exploring it's going to help you a ton you also want to have the minimap rotation on fixed and minimap angle on fixed angle and this will instantly turn your minimap from a confusing mess into something that i love so much in comparison to the other monster hunter games i also put all games is on fixed because I always want to be in control and I don't want to press another button in order to get the information that I need. The other important game setting is actually the flash effects for your allies and this option is so bad that I would actually turn even my own flash and hit effects off if they would give me the option and I actually recommend that they do that in the future because it it blocks the screen the every flashing effect is just going to block the screen and you're not going to be able to see what the monster is doing in addition to crit effects i also turn off other players sacred models and um, a very important setting and one of the many sacred settings that we're going to go through to improve your writing experience with sacred is sacred auto explorer mode uh, which you should turn to off um, which prevents your sacred to wandering off around the place uh, whenever you are afk and you're not doing it Anything. I also set the weapon attack power to be without coefficient number uh, since the other option will bloat the attack power based on the weapon that you're using. So, for example, for greatsword, um, let's just say you have a greatsword that is going to be at around a thousand attack power, and then you have a dual blade that is going to be around like 200, 300 power. But these two weapons actually deal the same damage, but the greatsword is going to have just bigger numbers while the um, dual blade is going to have have a lot of smaller numbers um, so it's going to make up for that the hunting core guide i put on too because it will always display the sun guides 
even when you have your weapon shift this allows you to play instantly even when you're writing your secret you will see the songs and if you using a hunting cone for the first time or it's the first few hunts uh, and you don't really know the song rhythms uh, it's going to help you a lot and lastly on the game settings uh, turn the chat window to close after you enter something in the chat which is the way that other games function quickly going over some important control settings you want to disable auto shift and i don't even know why this is an option the directional control though you want to to be set to type one but this is one of the options that you can actually have on type two and it is based on preference and experience on other monster hunter games uh, so to make it simple after certain weapon attacks your character can do a directional combo attack so for example for gun lance in the background you can do a bunny hop after you do an attack and it's considered a directional combo attack and the direction you have to hold for that hop uh, depends on the settings that you use here so the type one is going to be based on camera uh, and if i'm holding back on s on keyboard right now uh, and the camera is angled this way my hunter will hop towards the camera and to his right but then if i do type two he will hop backwards even though i'm holding back and s um, towards the camera because the base input is actually based on the hunter and not the camera so the direction that i'm holding on both of these clips is the s uh, and back direction but as you can see the result is going to be uh, different i personally use type 1 even though in every single monster hunter before this i use type 2 just because i think type 1 makes a lot much more sense uh, the stinger auto load is bad just turn it off no question asked we do be hating automatic stuff around here but another important secret control is secret manual control which you gotta go for type 2 and um, it's just way better moving to the camera options there's some very important settings here but just a quick note about sensitivity is that the normal sensitivity and the focus sensitivity is actually different uh, I know the exact ratio but essentially the normal sensitivity is always going to be a slower than focus mode sensitivity and that's why I have the other one on lower but again my ratio isn't pixel perfect so maybe you guys can help me with that in the comments the trajectory speed is for some bow and heavy bow gun attacks where instead of aiming directly at the target you're aiming kind of like a war mortar so um, changing this will affect the uh, speed of uh, aiming your mortar attack the camera distance zoom you want this to be set to 10 because it's actually the POV slider of monster hunter and you want to be able to see as much as you possibly can the camera shake and sway i put on one and i know that some people really get the satisfaction from these settings but if you're farming monsters this starts to become very annoying uh, and it might actually give you motion sickness so reduce it if you want the next four options that i'm going to tell you are breakneck options that are pretty bad since we're on mouse and keyboard and we don't even need these options uh, so turn off the focus camera train camera camera correction and auto centering uh, and uh, in the last page uh, also turn off uh, the monster sighting option uh, then come back to the third page and set all of these settings like mine again most of these settings are just breakneck options that are total garbage an example would be the radical direction which is just terrible uh, so turn that off and then for the target camera set it to type 5 uh, because we're not going to be using control uh, to uh, direct ourselves at the monster and on to the most important settings hit this shit as soon as you possibly can yep i think that'll do it thanks partner let's talk more at base camp <laughs> Now to the juiciest stuff, which is the actual keybinds. You have three keybind sections here. The first section, we don't change much. I will quickly go over it so you can switch to the ones that I use, but I pretty much changed four of these buttons. Uh, one is for displaying the sub menu, which I moved to M4. Then one is for skipping the cutscenes, uh, which I put to caps lock. And then the final two is all about adjusting the uh, camera. Uh, so the up and down uh, by default was on the arrow keys, uh, which is uh, very hard to press. And you have to actually lift your hands to reach them but now i uh, put it on one and three which makes it very easy to access and you don't have to actually lift your hands up for it with this out of the way the remaining two sections are melee and ranged keybinds and my goal for these two was to make them exactly like each other with zero difference to make the transition between the melee and ranged as seamless as i possibly can and i gotta tell you guys i was more than enough successful with it as they are basically the same and so much so that i don't even notice the switch from a melee weapon to a ranged weapon 
I feel like I have like 14 weapons now, uh, 40 melee weapons now. And by default, Capcom has made the melee and range different, which I always found over complicated uh, because they could actually, since the changes that they've done from Iceborne to Wilds, um, they could have both of them the exact same. And so I really don't know why they haven't done that. So getting it started on the Hunter controls, everything is default. Two options that you can switch in this section is uh, one, the item button and gather button. This is E and F by default. You can switch these up between each other, but if you do the switch, um, you have to switch an extra button, uh, which is marked by red um, on your keybind. So just scroll down until you find that option and then switch that option as well. The other option is your sprint button, which can be held or toggled. Um, I personally feel more in control with the hold option, uh, but you can change that as you see fit. Weapon controls is very important. By default, Capcom has the special weapon action on keyboard and uh, I moved it to M4 and of course I removed the M4 from the hold focus mode. Now my idea of combat extends beyond the, these bindings right here and what I mean by that is I have the M5 button uh, freed up for my melee weapons. Uh, so um, here we have a bunch of simultaneous actions that the Capcom allows us to uh, do without using any uh, macros or anything. Um, so we can have any key binding for these simultaneous actions and press one button to do the action for multiple buttons depending on the weapon and we can make different profiles so for example right here i uh, make a profile uh, for the great sword and i put the offset attack which is the combination of uh, two buttons uh, on my m5 to all the time i press m5 and it will have 100 percent accuracy i will never ever do a wrong attack uh, all the time i just press one button and it will do that action for me uh, the same thing can be done for example for charge blade uh, this time i use the perfect guard uh, for example and i put it on m5 and um, it will do that action for me um, by just pressing one button. The other important section in the weapon control is focus mode. By default, the option being alt is actually pretty good, but you can change this to hold based on your preference or depending on the weapon that you use. One issue that might come up here is that uh, if you accidentally hold shift, to sheath your weapon while you're in focus mode. You will do a focus attack, uh, but the solution for this is to get used to the uh, actual sheath button, which is ERF, depending on what you chose earlier, um, and you'll never run into this issue ever again. The mantle keybind I freed up and I put it on a random keybind because down the line, I will actually show you a way that you can have up to 36 keybinds for uh, your items and um, everything else, like gestures, the... Um, poses and every everything that you might possibly think of i will show you 36 keybinds that you can use so you will not need this keybind for slinger controls i deleted all the secondary binding options and i changed the select the scout for line notification to q this cannot be used when you have your weapon on shift but for exploring and gathering you just have to press q to choose between uh, the slinger options at your left and then press whatever your gather button is to get that item without flinging your mouse around trying to find where that item actually is this is extremely helpful uh, for you but um, you only ever need one button for it um, and the options below it are actually breakneck options uh, which will fling your camera to the location that those things are which is completely in unnecessary in my opinion the mounted monster controls is good by default uh, but you can change them around the place like i've done now sacred controls is where some really juicy stuff happens by default the game has two buttons for calling your sacred which is tab and q but with the combination of the settings i showed you guys before and the settings we're changing now uh, you only need one button to call your sacred and that is q uh, which is for the auto route mode uh, don't panic though because because you still have full control over your sacred because of the settings that you changed with me earlier in the video. So if I press Q right here, my sacred is gonna go for it and I can just, you know, have my hands off my keyboard and mouse. And whenever I wanna take the control of my sacred, I can just hold the direction that I want to go to. And you can see a little bit of a fling in the scout flies um, whenever it gives me the actual control. So right there, you, you guys saw that. And now if I let go of the button, I have full control of the sacred. And even if on the um, auto route mode, I can actually bring my striker to a stop instantly by just holding M4. 
uh, and it won't go anywhere until I actually tell it to. And if I want to take the manual mode uh, from here, I just hold whatever direction that I want and it will go to that direction. And if I want to go back to the uh, auto mode, I just press Q and I instantly go into auto route. This is insanely better of a experience with your secret instead of just doing everything manually so um i highly advise you guys to use these settings just change all the bindings in the sacred section to my bindings and you're good next one is item bar and keyboard shortcut controls and you just have to change the bindings to the ones i'm showing you on the screen essentially in order to browse through your item bar you just use your master scroll wheel and uh, to browse through your ammo and coding you add a modifier uh, which i've set to control um, to your mouse wheel uh, so if you hold control and use your mouse wheel you will browse through your ammo and coatings however with the next section which is the keyboard shortcuts the way i've done it you have eight different bars and on each bar you can assign up to six items or anything else you like which is like crafting poses and stickers or anything else and these are accessible from one to six on your keyboard uh, and the eight different bars are accessible through zxcv and uh, f1 to f4 pretty much you can switch your bars using these bindings and uh uh, then you choose the item you want from one to six um, and this way you will have access to 48 different bindings which by the way in the future i will make a video about all the items inventory management and all the bindings that you can do that i've done that has been really really great and i pretty much never ever have to actually browse through my, my items ever again so if you guys are interested in that you can go ahead and subscribe and it will be done in the very near future for the rest, I'm just going to quickly go through them. You can slow the video down and match your settings with mine. Uh, some of the notable changes in these settings are I put all the stickers on F5. I put the map on tab. Uh, the member list is put on edge. Um, a skipping quest results is put on caps lock. And finally, picture mode is uh, put on Y. Uh, this is also my hot settings if you guys are interested in that. Now for ranged weapons, again, quickly, I'm just going to scroll through it uh, for you guys uh, so you can match your settings with mine. Pretty much all these options are the same in weapons control tab. Uh, the keybinds order is a bit different, uh, but it functions the same way as a melee bindings. Again, you have to change your settings to mine in order for these to match because some of these settings by, is by default uh, for Capcom is actually different. Uh, so go through, uh, slow the video down, go through all these settings with me and uh, and you change them to the way that I've done them for the ranged weapon is going to be the exact same as the melee weapons. Now I've reviewed these options many times and this is the best result I've got over the years of Monster Hunter experience and I gotta say uh, this is damn near perfect even in Monster Hunter World I wasn't even close to getting this much of a perfect uh, keybind settings so that's why I got really excited and I wanted to make this video for you guys uh, but that's about it guys I hope you all enjoyed. I did put a lot of time into making this video so a like and a sub would be much appreciated uh, and if you guys can share this video with your friends because we're a very small channel and as much as i'm trying to help you guys i'm gonna need a little bit of your help to reach out to other people uh, but yeah that's about it guys uh, thanks for watching and i see you all next time